Let's go into the word. Today we are coming from Acts 27. Acts 27. And we're going to look at verses 13 through 20. Acts 27, verses 13 through 20. Very familiar text uh, to many. But let's see if we can uh, glean some more understanding from the text. Acts 27, verses 13 through 20. All right, verse 13, it says, And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a temperous wind called Eurachlodon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clada, we had much work to come by the boat. Which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands straight sail and so were driven and we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest the next day they lightened the ship and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, how to have hope in a hopeless situation. How to have hope in a hopeless situation. Grace Center, have you ever found yourselves in a hopeless situation? You know, the Bible says that we are supposed to have hope. You know, hope is in the future. Okay, we, we, we are to hope for things and hope that things will get better. You know, it is a future uh, a, a thing that we're looking for it to come into our present. But have you ever found yourself in a hopeless situation? Everything you tried was not working. Every person you called, you could not reach or they were not getting back to you. And, you know, you tried different things to, to, to make things better. Have you ever found yourselves in a hopeless situation? You see, here in the text, we see that Paul and the other prisoners and the people on board, they found themselves in a hopeless situation. Here we have Paul, he's on his way to see Caesar in Rome. You know, and, and Paul at this time, he is a prisoner on this ship. He's on his way to see Caesar in Rome and you know, two of his companions are also with him, Luke, and another companion is, 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 is with Paul. You know, and it's kind of it's interesting even with that, because here you have Paul, who is a prisoner. OK, he's on this ship. He's locked in chains. But yet two of his companions are coming along with him. Now, it is very risky to associate yourself with a prisoner, especially during that time. But that shows you the dedication that they had with Paul and that they had for the Lord. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's always good to have someone in your circle who has a relationship with the Lord. Because if they have a relationship with the Lord, they'll say, you know what, we're going to roll with you 
through the ups and downs and the twists and turns. And here you have Luke and this other companion that said, yeah, Paul, we know you are a prisoner, but we're going to tag along anyway. We're going to we're going to take this ship. We're going to take this ride along with you regardless. They are on this ship along with Paul as Paul is on his way to see Caesar. Now, as Paul is on this ship, he found favor with this centurion named Julius. Hmm. He's on this ship. He's on his way to, to Rome to see Caesar. But Paul found favor. <laughs> He's locked in chains, but Paul found favor. He's a prisoner, but Paul found favor. <laughs> it is a good thing, friends, to know the Lord. Because when you know the Lord, you can find favor. Favor is that thing that God will give to you that is not anything that you really deserve to have. It's just that God is so rich in, in his grace that he said, you know what? You don't deserve it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway because I love you. <laughs> Paul is in chains. Paul is a prisoner. He's on this ship. But yet he still found favor with this centurion named Julius. As they're on their way to Rome, um, there was a lot of debate as far as where they should go and how they should get there. There's a lot of things going on. As they're having this debate about how they should sail, uh, they lost a lot of time. Paul was telling them, he said, you know, what we need to do, we need to stay put for the winter. We need to stay right here. For a little while, because something's going to happen out there. Um, um, this is not the time to sail. Because um, during this time to sail, there are storms, there are issues that can arise if we go out and if we sail right now. We need to stay put for right now. And we can go out later to take me to Rome. So there was a lot of debate about this and time was lost. They lost a lot of time discussing all of this, right? And they ignored the wisdom and the advice of Paul. They ignored Paul. And what happened when they ignored the advice of Paul? Well, they, they went ahead and sailed anyway. And then they found themselves in a storm. But Grace said this wasn't just any old type of storm. No, no, it, it, it wasn't just a storm just coming out with just, you know, just the regular rain and just, you know, you know, just a, a, a regular breeze. This was a real storm. This was a storm that tossed them to and fro. This was a storm that no one wanted to be in. They even gave a name to this storm called Eurocalidon. Yeah, this was a violent storm. I know sometimes here, even in our home, you know, we can hear the, the thunder and the lightning and hear all these things happening and it will shake the house. Imagine yourselves being out in the ocean, in the seas, and you're in the midst of a violent storm. Can you imagine that? Paul told them to stay. Paul told them not to go right now, but they decided to go anyway. And now they find themselves in the midst of a violent storm. With this storm, Grace Center, uh, it, it, it pushed the ship about 400 miles away from where they started from. All right. So now they find themselves on the coast of North Africa. All right. So in other words, this violent storm, it pushed them about 400 miles away from where they initially started from. And where they're at, it is known to be the graveyard for vessels. Paul told them not to go. <laughs> Paul said we need to stay put. 
But they ignored the advice of the Apostle Paul, and now they find themselves in a storm. As they're in this storm, Grace Center, what they decided to do was they decided that they would lighten the ship. They would take things to, 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 to throw overboard so that the ship itself could ride higher so the water could not go inside of the ship. All right. So if, if they had things on board, they, they would take things and throw it off the ship so the ship could rise higher to prevent more water from getting inside of the ship. But how many of you know that with this violent storm, that wasn't working? They tried everything that they could, but nothing was working. They were throwing things overboard to help the ship go higher so water could not come inside the ship. But nothing was working. Oh, Grace said, have you tried some things yourselves? to help you out in the midst of a storm and nothing was working. Uh, you tried this and you tried that and you tried, you tried everything that you could to make things a whole lot better for yourselves, but nothing was working. You, know, you called this person and they could not give you any type of advice, so that wasn't working. You read all of the self-help books that you possibly could find and that wasn't working. You call your best friend who, who always have the best gossip sometimes and you think they can tell you what to do in your situation, but what they were telling you, you tried and that wasn't working. You tried everything in your power to help you in this hopeless situation, but nothing was working. It's the same thing with these prisoners and these individuals on this boat, they tried everything they could to help themselves out in this hopeless situation. And nothing was working. <laughs> Let me go back and read verse number 20 again. Verse 20 it says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope, all hope, let me say it again, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. The message translation says, we lost all hope of rescue. They did not see the sun nor the stars for days. In other words, they were in this dark place in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, having the sun out, it does something for you. I mean, who wants to wake up and the sun not be out? Who wants to wake up and you go outside and it's just dark? Day and night. Who who wants that? I mean, even when you go outside at night, I mean, you want you want to see some stars in the sky. You don't want, want to be pitch black dark. They're in this hopeless situation. And the word tells us that they lost hope. They lost hope on anyone coming to save them. They lost hope thinking that they would die. At any moment, no sun, no stars, they lost hope. You see, when we have the light on us, that gives us hope. Mm -hmm. We all want light in our lives because light gives us hope. The word even tells us that we are the light of the world. Okay? We are supposed to give hope <laughs> to the world. 
It's always good to have some light on the inside of you so that when the world sees you, it can even give the world some hope. And when it gives the world some hope, the world can turn to the church. They can turn to God. They can turn to Jesus. And if they're in a hopeless situation by them turning to Jesus, they will be hopeless anymore. They found themselves not seeing the sun nor the stars for days and they found themselves in a hopeless situation. Now I know sometimes we read the Bible and we just read it so fast and so quickly that we forget that these stories actually existed. Imagine you being in this situation. How would you feel? Imagine placing yourself or maybe having a loved one in this situation. How would you feel? They thought they were going to die. They thought their lives were over. But let's look at what Paul did. Oh, that apostle Paul, that tent maker from Tarsus. Let's see what he did. Verses 21 through 25. Watch this. It says, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me. In other words, y'all should have listened to me <laughs> and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss on any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. In other words, watch this. Um, um, Paul, he stood in the midst of them and he pretty much told them, I was right. I told you guys we should not leave right now. I told you all that if we leave right now, we are going to find ourselves in a hopeless situation. We're going to find ourselves in a storm. You should have listened to me. But never mind that. We're here now. Uh, but guess what happened last night? An angel of God, he visited me and he told me some things. And this is what he said. Do you want to hear? This is what he said. He told me that we're going to make it out of this situation. All of us will make it out of this situation. All 276 of us will make it out of this situation. No one is going to die. No harm is going to come to anyone. Now, I can't say much about this ship. This ship, well, the ship is going down. But as far as your life, you're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Because the angel of God paid me a visit and told me that everything is going to be all right. So don't worry about this ship. It's going to be okay. But listen to me now. You did not listen to me before, but I, I, I recommend you listen to me now. I'm giving you hope in this hopeless situation to let you know that you are are going to be okay. In other words, watch this. Paul had a promise from God. And the promise, watch this, the promise that Paul had was that he had to stand before Caesar. Now, he could not stand before Caesar if he was dead. <laughs> but God told him, he's like, nope. You're going to stand before Caesar and testify about me. So you're going to make it to Rome. 
But not only are you going to make it to where you need to get to, everyone on this ship along with you says, you have found favor with me. I'm going to show my favor upon them and they're going to be okay as well. It's good to associate yourself with someone that has some favor with the Lord. Man. Paul had favor. And by association, the people on the ship along with him found favor as well. The entire ship would go down but everyone would be saved because one man on that ship found favor with God. Ah, uh, come here, saints. Do you know that sometimes by the favor that you have, the ship, something may go down, but the people associated with you, they may find the, the, the residue of the favor that you have and they won't be harmed just because you have favor with God. Paul said, oh, we're, the ship is going down. But since I got favor, since the angel of God visited me and told me that I have to make it to my destination, everything is going to be okay. They were in a hopeless situation, but God spoke to Paul and Paul spoke to the people. Let me repeat that once again. They were in a hopeless situation. But God spoke to Paul and Paul spoke to the people. Very soon, I'm just telling you today, I'm just a messenger. That's, that's all I am. But I'm just here to tell you right now that the situation you in, it may look hopeless, but you're going to be okay. You're going to get over it. Everything will work out somehow, some way. Everything will just, look, you don't have to worry about the situation you're in right now. It will work out some way or another. God spoke to Paul. Paul spoke to the people and told them everything is going to work out the way it should. Amen. Grayson, watch this. Watch this. When you find yourselves in a hopeless situation, you have to remember the last thing that God told you. Mm. Woo! Mm. Woo! The doors of the church are open. Mm. Invitation is extended. Let me say it one more time. Mm. That hit me right there. When you find yourself in a hopeless situation, you have to remember mm -hmm. the last thing that God told you. Mm -hmm. If Amen. God gave you a word, yes. you must stand on that word. Mm -hmm. You need to hold on to that word with a kung fu grip. You must hold on to that word like it was just the, the last thing. It, you, you could not, you can't breathe without holding on to that word. Mm -hmm. You cannot move without holding on to that word. You have to remember the last thing that God told you. Yes. The angel of God, who is a messenger of God, Angels don't speak on behalf of themselves. Hmm. They speak on behalf of God. Amen. So if the angels have visited you and told you what God said, guess what? God said it. Amen. So in other words, they're in this situation. The angel of God told Paul, Everything was going to be okay. And that was the last thing that Paul heard. Mm -hmm. He's still <laughs> in this storm and he gets a word from God that everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It does not look like everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. He looks to the left and he sees the seas being 
tossed to and fro. He looked to the right and he see everything happening all around. He's in the boat and he's being rocked back and forth. But he gets a word in the midst of this same storm. It does not look like things are getting better at that moment. But mm. it was the last thing mm. that God told him. Yes. What was the last thing mm. that God told you? Mm. I know you may be in a storm right now, but forget all of that. Mm. What was the last thing that God told you? My God, my God. Mm. Did he tell you, tell you that everything would work out? Did he tell you that everything would be okay? Did he tell you that this is a temporary situation? What was the last thing that he said? Hmm. Whatever that was, you hang your hat Amen. on that. Hmm. God told him everything is going to be okay. You're going to stand before Caesar. Mm -hmm. Things are going to work out. I know it looks a little bit hairy right now. But everything is going to work out. The King James Version, in, in, in verse 24, it says, uh, 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 fear not. Hmm. Uh, the Message Version says, don't give up. Mm -hmm. My God. You may be in a storm right now, mm. but I'm here to tell you, Fear not. Hmm. You may be in the storm right now, but I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Don't quit. Yes. Don't throw in the towel. Just remember the last thing that God told you. And watch this. You probably say, well, pastor, I can't remember the last thing God told me. And as a matter of fact, this is a new storm. Well, I got news for you there, too. Ask God today what you should do in the hopeless situation that you're in. And when he speaks to you, that's the last thing he said until he tells you something else. But you hang your hat. On the last thing that he said. Amen. The Bible says, fear not. Hmm. Don't give up. Verses 30 through 32, it talks about how uh, the prisoners <laughs> on this ship, you know, evidently they didn't want to listen to Paul. Paul told them that everything was going to work out. Everything was going to be okay. But they wanted to get off the ship early. So in verses 30 through 32, it talks about how they, you know, were, were they had lifeboats uh, on the ship and they were trying to let down the, the lifeboats and, 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 and word got back to Paul and Paul told the centurion Julius. And what did they do? They cut uh, 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 the rope that they were using to let down the lifeboats. The prisoners... Did not want to listen to Paul. See, at first the captains didn't want to listen to Paul. When he told them, let's not sail right now. Paul spoke to everyone on the ship, including the prisoners, this time around and told them everything would work out. And they did not want to listen to Paul. At some point, you got to listen to somebody when they have some wisdom that God has given them. Amen. Paul told them everything would work out, and but they still wanted to leave early. Watch this. When God has given you a word, mm -hmm. don't try to get in there and just fix it yourself if that's not what God told you to do. God not tell the prisoners to let down the lifeboats and do all that. That's not what God told them. But they were trying to help God out. <laughs> Let God be God and you be you. Mm. Look, God is very good at being God. <laughs> Ooh, man, I'm going to tell you something. God is the best God I've ever known. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. What's that phrase? Often, often imitate but never duplicated. <laughs> There are many other guys out there trying to be the almighty God. But yeah, you can't intimidate. You try to copyright. You can do all this stuff that you try to be. But there's only one God and he is good 
at being God. And since he's good at being God, he does not need your help in trying to figure out how to get out of that situation. Just remember what he said and to do the very thing that he told mm -hmm. you to do. These prisoners trying to get off early. But they're like, nope, that's not going to happen today. Mm -hmm. Verses 39 through 41, it talks about how they are now sailing and they can see the seashore. Mm -hmm. They're almost there. They can see the shore. But as they're on their way to the shore, they hit this reef and now you have the ship beginning to break up. In other words, they can see where they're going and it looks like things are just going to finally just work itself out. But they, they hit this reef and the ship begins to, to fall apart. <laughs> the ship begins to, begins to sink. They see themselves coming out. They can see the seashore. They're, they're coming out of their situation. But as they're coming out, the ship begins to sink. Mm. Have you almost saw yourself or you see yourself almost coming out? And as you're almost coming out, it looks like things are about to work out. Or, oh, you know, I talked to this job and they said, yeah, we'll call you back in in, in, in two days and you're so excited, you start planning, start getting new clothes for your job and all this stuff and you're ready and next thing you know, you don't hear back from them in two days and three days go by and four days go by. You're like, what in the world? is? They told me they would call me back in a couple of days. I had all hope, but now it seems like everything is going down once again. They could see the seashore, <laughs> but they hit this reef underneath and the ship begins to go down. Hmm. But they have to remember <laughs> what God told Paul. He told Paul that the ship is going to go down. But you're going to be okay. <laughs> you're going to make it to where you need to get to. <laughs> Forget the ship. Hmm. You're going to be okay. Amen. Everything is going to work out for you. Mm. Now watch this. Let's read verses 42 through 44. It says, And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and to get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Amen. That last part, uh, uh, they escaped all. Mm. Everybody. Glory. Safely. To land. Amen. All of them. In other words, watch this. All of them that was on that ship made it out of that situation. Everyone on that ship, when the ship began to go down, they made it out of what was happening on that ship. All of them. The ship was going down, but they made it out. They were okay. I'm here to tell you right now, whatever situation you're in, you are going to be okay. Just remember the last thing that God has told you and just hang your hat on that. Mm -hmm. Stand on that word. Amen. Through the ups and downs, when it looks like things are not working out, stand on God's promises. So, the question on the floor is, how do you have hope in a hopeless mm -hmm. situation? It's easy. 
You place your trust in God. Amen. And you believe in what he said. Amen. Just place your trust in him. Place your trust in God. Just place your trust in him. Just, 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 just trust him. Okay. And believe what he said. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we go through things and we're like, why do I have to go through this? I'm sick and tired of going through this all the time. And we have these questions about what's happening, what's going on. It could be that God allows certain things to happen to condition you and, 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 and to help you mm -hmm. so that when you come through that situation, you will be ready for the next situation. Amen. In other words, you cannot trust someone if you never had to place your trust in someone how can you trust someone when they told you that it would work out when they have never proven to you by them giving you a word and by them getting you out of that situation mm -hmm. but trust is built up over time so if they came through before if they made a promise to you before and they fulfilled their promise and it worked out, what makes you think it's not going to work out this time? Mm -hmm. You just go back and remember the last time they told you something and they said, trust in me and believe in me. And when that worked out, it should build up trust in that person. Amen. So if God has brought you out before, mm -hmm. God can bring you out again. Amen. So if you now find yourselves in a hopeless situation, just remember what he did last time. And if he brought you out before, he can do it again. If he made a way before, he can do it again. If he opened up doors before, he can do it again. Place your trust in God and believe in what he said. Mm -hmm. Even on this fast, we're fasting for the next 21 days. When God speaks to you on this fast, when you draw closer to him, if he has given you a word on this fast, trust him. Amen. Just trust God. Forget what's happening around you. Forget the storm that you in. And look, I know it's not always easy. Sometimes it's hard. But trust God. Believe in what he said. Your situation, it may be hopeless, but we serve a God that can stand in, that can get in the midst of our situations along with us, and he can pull us through whatever we're going through. Just place your trust and believe in what he has told you. The virtual doors of the church are open. The invitation is extended at this time. If you're watching today and if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, in other words, if you were to die today and you don't know where you would go, whether it would be hell or heaven, but you want to make sure that it's heaven, you can place your faith in the hands of Jesus on today. You can receive Jesus right now and you can, res you can reserve your spot in heaven. If that's you, if you want to receive Jesus, you can say this prayer along with me. You can say, Dear God, thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died, and that he rose from the grave. If you have prayed 
that prayer, you're saved. There's no complicated formula that you have to remember. It's just that easy. If you pray that prayer, we would love to hear from you. We would love to connect with you on this new journey and this new walk with Jesus. So let us know. Comment in the comments section or send us a private note. We would love uh, to connect with you. For all others, if you have any special prayer requests, let us know. We would love to stand in the gap and pray with you as well. Amen. All right, at this time, it is tithes and offering time. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Uh, if you go to our website, thegracecenterga.org, click on that give link. Uh, it has all the ways in which you may be able to give. You can give directly through the site. You can give uh, via our cash app, which is the Grace Center GA. Uh, you can download our Give the Fight app and, and give uh, that way. Or you can mail your checks or money orders to us as well. Wh whatever is more convenient for you, we have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Amen. All right, my good people. I pray and hope that this message has blessed you on today. Look, share this word on today you you just never know who you may be blessing on today they, they may find themselves in a hopeless situation and just by this word it just it, it gives them hope it gives them hope so share this word with others um so you can you can provide some hope to them also uh, it's not too late to join us on this uh, 21 day fast. If you would like to join us, uh, let us know. Send us an email uh, to info at thegracecenterga.org and let us know that you would like to join us on this 21 day fast. Uh, you'll receive the uh, inspirational emails every day for the next 21 days uh, just to help you keep going. Uh, through this journey. Also at the end of the fast on the 29th we always break the fast with a healing and a miracle service. Uh, that service will be virtual but look God still move uh, through technology uh, but if you would like to join us on this fast let us know. Uh, comment in the comment section. We'll connect with you. Get your email address and we'll add you uh, to the list. Amen. All right, let's close out in prayer at this time. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for this word that you have given us. Um, there may be someone out there, and they may be in a hopeless situation. I pray that you will speak directly to that individual. Speak to them. Let them know what to do in their situation. Help them in their situation. You know all the details, Lord. You know everything that is going on. Help them, Father. For all others and for everyone who are joining us on this 21-day fast, I pray that you will strengthen them and help them and, uh, and, and, and just speak directly to them on this fast, Lord. As we draw closer to you, Lord, I pray that you would just draw closer back to us, Lord, and uh, uh, help your people, encourage your people, Lord, strengthen them on this time of, of, of dedication and honor back to you. For those who gave their lives to Jesus Christ on today, I pray that you will help them in this new walk with you. Um, and for all others, anything that may be going through, help them as well. Bless the tithes, bless the offering. I pray that it uh, up build, it builds your kingdom, uh, it builds the ministry, and just I pray that you will sow it back into the lives of your people. Everything that they gave, multiply it back to them as well. We thank you, Father. We praise you. We give you all the honor and all the glory. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. All right, everyone, I love you. Take care until next week. Be safe and happy fasting 
to all of you who are fasting along with us. Take care. I love you.